Hello there, hairstylist community. I'm that hairstylist, Jimmy, and with me today, I have my lovely co-host. Sam Snyder. Sam Snyder. So we're not gonna go? I thought you were doing like Sam or Samantha, Samantha or badass co-owner of Rebel Revival. Thank you. <laughs> So, for our review today, we have something huge. Okay, so you want to tell them what we're reviewing? Yes. All right. So, these are the Zero Time brushes. The first one is the 3.5, meant for balayage and foiling. The second is the 4.5, meant for root touch-ups. And lastly, this is the 5.5, which is meant for root touch-ups and all-over color. All right, guys. Just so you can tell, uh, see the difference, compare, tell. Um, this is a standard brush. This is a 5.5 brush. Uh, this thing's huge. Like, when I first saw this, I was like, am I going to sweep up the entire salon with this? Um, and then it does come with this nice little bowl that has a concave inside that fits with this. It's got a little measuring thing engraved in here and also a lip to wipe off any excess product as it's coming out. All right, we're gonna go into a reading about zero time. While using the zero time system, stylists noticed not only how much time is saved, but also surprisingly how much product was being saved. After testing, we decided to have a professional study done by Bria Institute. Bria has its own pharmacist and salon with a laboratory just for beauty products. The president and CEO has many patents of his own, which include beauty and hair color products. During the study, Silas used approximately 32% less product than the conventional brush for root touches and 15% less product for application to the whole head. The new brush system also took 26% less time to apply product to the roots when compared to a conventional brush and bowl. Hmm. All righty, let's see. Initially, the goal was to save time through a brush that could cover more surface area at once, but it manifested in also saving product culminating in a significant... All right, seriously, culminating, fiscal, like these are not, it's not hairdresser talk. I digress. Um, culminating in significant fiscal savings as well. Being ergonomic and curved helps with fatigue due to the large brush and soft bristles. The client also gets bonus of a mini head massage. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> I would like the brush because I would, I want a head massage, please. <laughs> All right, let's talk about first impressions. What are your feelings on these brushes? Skepticism. Oh. I'm kind of picky about my brushes, not gonna lie. So, I don't know, this is different. Could be one of those, like, people from the olden days. <laughs> Get over here! <laughs> <laughs> this is huge. My first impression is, it's sturdy. I kind of wish the handle was a little bit thicker. Um, got big hands. And the bristles feel really soft, but I, I can tell that I'm really gonna like this right here because that really looks like it's going to go with the shape of the head. Um, I'm excited to try these, but I'm skeptical like you, because one of the things that I'm skeptical about is if it's going to be sloppy, because something this big, I just feel like is going to make a lot of mess, and I can see me just taking it out and doing this, and it's like all over. Um, <laughs> <because Yeah. laughs> Another thing I was thinking is that this is kind of like a shovel and pail. Oh, so it's like... Yeah. So mean. Just being real. All right, we're gonna show you a little video of us using these in the salon and we'll be right back. Yeah, I do like this for a root touch up. Yeah, use that well one. Yeah, I feel like ever since these came out, I have noticed other companies kind of like following suit. Yeah. Um, but like, I don't think that I would use me personally. I don't think that I would use it for like a bleach retouch or um like anything like precision like highlighting but like as far as like toning or like root coverage i think that it shaves off a little bit of time 
especially when you take like longer sections like this. The number one thing that everybody keeps saying is like, well, what about the bowl? Because the bowl, you know, most bowls are circular, but with this bowl, it matches perfect. All right, slow down real quick. Just show me the brush. I mean, I don't know, I've seen that kind of design before, but personally, I don't have to get it. Yeah. So I just balayaged Stacy, and now I'm toning her, and I'm using the medium size zero time brush, and I'm just taking these kind of like side to side sections to apply this toner, and it's working out well. I'm able to get her back portion of her head done in just a couple minutes. I don't have to put anything on her root. I'm just toning the length and ends where I did the balayage highlights. And I do like this brush for this. I really don't see any scenario where I would really use uh, the bigger, the biggest size brush. Like this is really huge in comparison to a lot of color brushes so I don't think it needs to be bigger than this. This is already huge. I feel like these brushes and this brush bowl were um, made really well to go together because I'm just putting my brush in and you see I'm able to get color side to side on the whole thing where a normal color bowl would be round. Here it's like the, the color brush and the bowl are like the same width. The color just kind of sits in the bottom there. And just like that, I have like the whole back of her head done. And I'm just blazing through, almost done. color that's left in the bottom of my bowl is right in line with the brush. I do think that if you were using like a toner that was uh, more watery, like maybe like Shades EQ or something, this might not be ideal just because it would become more messy because the brush is so big. But for stuff like, you know, Color Touch, Colestin, Illumina, I think it's good because those aren't like watery toners. I usually use like more watery toners with a squirt bottle anyway. So I just did a bleach out on Carrie and I am using a small zero time brush. I'm taking section long sections like this down the back of her head and just blazing through the root touch out. Then I'm going to melt her toner down, but you see how quick I got this back section done. I do like the bristles. They're not, they're firm, but the ends of them are soft, almost feathered to where it really wouldn't create harsh lines, I don't think. I think if you were going to do a root shadow or a root smudge, this would be the perfect brush to do that with. Just because it kind of does that feather work for you, just the way that, like, see here it's thick and then it gets thinner. I think that's helpful. I am a fan of this bowl because as I'm going, I'm noticing that, like, if I was using a circle bowl, I'd really be kind of like putting extra effort into scraping sides of the bowl to get all the product out. Whereas this bowl, the way it's shaped, it just kind of goes with the brush. I'm able to just kind of use the brush almost like a shovel. Like, matches the shape. So what was it like while you were using it? So, surprise! I liked it! Made That's a believer out of me! I was blazing through. I was going quicker than I normally do. I was getting the toner on there.
So basically, I mean, it, it's legit where they said it saves you time. Yeah, I think it. I think it does what it says it's gonna do. I think it shaves off a little bit of time, and you know we love to save time. Walk us through it. So I, I used this one and this one. I really three point five, four point five. I really didn't. I didn't really use this for anything. I just felt like this was a little bit too much for me personally, but I love these. All right, I use this one in the video. We're gonna be using the big brush from the Zero Time Brushes just to show you the difference. This is actually a standard size. So little Miss Fluke over here that won't be in this video decided that I could do her roots. Uh, thank you for being such a great model. That's a privilege. That's a <laughs> All right, let's get started. Go to that hairstylist, click the link in the bio, and watch my new video, How to Wave Your Hair. I appreciate all of you. Like the stiff bristles that kind of feel like they're poking into each follicle. And he's almost done. It's almost. It's not even five minutes yet. What'd really? you say? Yeah, he's almost oh, done. It's right. not even five minutes yet. Six minutes and 30 seconds. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Here's something that worked for me. So normally, you know, you hold it from here and you work it through. Um, what I don't have in the video is when I reuse this again, I actually found more control when I actually held it from its base and put it on because this is so top heavy that when you hold it this far back, it does get a little heavy in your hands. So from right here, while you're applying the color, you have a lot more control. Dip it in, use the little lip on this, um, and then go through, and you have a lot more control versus if you're holding it up here, yeah, it's a, it's a little wobbly um, and a little heavy. So are you gonna legitly use these when you go back to the salon? Yes. Yeah, I'm actually really excited about Mainly it. Mainly the 4.5 and the 3.5? I think they're gonna be my new go-to because I told you I get stuck on brushes. Yeah, and I keep this at my station, so I wish more hairstylists that I work with would grab these. So I could have gotten a variety of opinions, but my opinion's the only one that matters. I mean, let's just be real, so. <laughs> that hairstylist. Um, all 85 of my subscribers they're gonna find value and the next thing you know, Zero Brush is gonna be sending out checks and be like, that hairstylist, here, just <laughs> take my money, give me more people. Like you guys can't use these, this is for me. Oh, uh, okay. a video for my friend, okay. <laughs> but now that like I have them, like I would like leave them out so that people could use them and I think that people will like them because we do like a shit ton of like toner, toning, melting, root shadow. Yeah, even having this by the toning station, it, the big one, since you said that you're gonna use the smaller ones, this by like the shampoo bowl, just leaving it there, obviously cleaning it in between. Yeah. Um, super quick to just like put on the color and just work it through. Yeah. Uh, hairdressers, you guys, you guys stay within your box. Try something different. I do recommend these, but like I said, just make sure that you're using them properly. Don't expect this to do a job that is meant for this. Using new tools and new products always kind of makes me excited to do hair all over again. So this for me kind of gave me that feel like I was trying something new and I, in conclusion, I like it. Like it. 
And if you don't want to use it, you know, you could just apply a little contour right there and then it's perfect. <laughs> it looks good. Cheekbones. So I do want to talk about sectioning for a minute. Um, my experience with it is that your sectioning has to be clean, like your partings, because this is such a big brush that if your sectioning isn't clean, this is just going to create a mess. I was doing vertical sections. Um, that was working the best for me with the root touch-ups. For you basics out there, vertical is up and down. This is like a jackhammer. This is going to literally get the work done very quickly. Um, it's not the most refined way of doing it, but it's gonna get the job done. And this is a lot like a chisel. You know, you go in there, you can feather, you can do some detailed work with this, but they both have a time and place. This takes a little longer. This is quicker, but sloppier. And see, and the thing is, I don't know if I would use the word slop. Did you feel like this was sloppy? So I feel like out of all of them, this one I probably would use the least. Just because I, I felt like I was flinging a little bit of color. So you'd use the one that's in the middle, which is slightly smaller than that one. Yes. Another thing that I did notice is that months ago when these brushes were first brought to my attention, I had never seen anything like it, and since then I've seen some brushes following suit, some bigger brushes going a little bit bigger than the average normal size. Can't say that I've paid attention to that, but um, that'd be interesting if they're like, look at zero time, let's copy that. I mean, isn't that how all businesses work anyway? Something becomes popular, something becomes good, um, and they see value in it, so instead of giving credit where credit is due, they take the structure of something and then turn it into their own and then claim like, you know, it's revolutionary. So we did a video before this, me and Lindsay, where we were discussing the highlighting combs and they said it's innovative, but in reality, that comb has been out for so long and I feel like something like this I have not seen, as you were saying that other companies might start copying or are, you know, in the process of that, that I haven't really seen something this big and this concave before. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if Zero Time actually pushes a little more and gets their name out there if other companies don't follow suit and make brushes just like this. Trendsetter. Trendsetter, yes, Zero Time, you are a trendsetter. So one thing that I will say is that these brushes would not work without this bowl. Nope. Most Here's a standard bowl, by the way, guys. That's not fitting in there. That's what she said. <laughs> so yeah, that's not gonna fit in there. Oh. See, that one will, th that's a smaller one, the 3.5. Yeah. But you really do need this. Also, the reason you need that, do you wanna tell them about the whole concave? Yeah. Also with the bowl, the color collects in the bottom and it's like a line, just like your brushes and just like your sectioning will be so it all matches. Yeah, so if you look at it from here, down there matches this perfectly when you put it in. So when you pull it out, you just hit that lip right there and it gets rid of any excess color that's on your bowl, which I guess that's what they're talking about, saving you time, uh, saving you product. Um, all of that equals more money. Money, it always comes down to money. Do you do this for the money or for the art? Both. That's a good answer. <laughs> and this is our review on the Zero Time Brushes and Bowl. If you are interested in this product, I'm gonna have a link down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave us a little comment, let us know what you would like us to review next, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.